When you fly the HOK, the mechanic appreciates what you've done with a ship that he really considers his baby. It's easy to get possessive about an aircraft. On the ground or in the air, the HOK is quickly recognized as the helicopter that needs no anti-torque tail rotor. Essentially, this is the same design, the same thinking, that established a record of success for the Command K-225 civilian utility model and the HTK Navy trainer. Part of the secret is the servo flap control on each of the rotor blades. This feature, combined with the intermeshing rotor configuration, produces maximum stability, precise control, and immediate response to gentle handling. For power, there's a Pratt & Whitney 600 horsepower WASP engine, which affects a proper balance of efficient performance and rugged dependability. Any mechanic recognizes that compactness and accessibility are part of the distinctive qualities of the HOK. But in the air, it's the pilot who acquires confidence in the joy of flight. It's a confidence born of experience, a thrill that comes when you have a responsive machine at your fingertips. The controls become extensions of your arms and legs. This feeling of oneness is possible because the servo flaps control the rotor blades in a natural fashion. No muscle or hydraulic power is needed. Deflection of the servo flap produces a force which twists the rotor blade. This change in angle of attack affects an increase or decrease in lift. It's like power steering without the mechanical complications. You can swing like a yo-yo on a string. Or hover without movement. Then there's another kind of thrill, and that is getting a job done under any conditions. Maybe there are airmen marooned in a mountainous area. At high altitudes, the air is thin and the wind treacherous. The HOK is specifically designed and equipped to make the rescue. Landings and takeoffs at high altitudes are routine to this workhorse of the sky. Positive, easy control and wide visibility allow the pilot to concentrate on the job at hand. Once he spots the clearing, it's get in and get out. Mission accomplished. No two missions are exactly alike. The HOK is prepared for any emergency, any terrain. Proof of its ability to cope with extreme conditions can be seen in an area covered with loose sand. The rotors throw up a cloud of gritty dust that reduces visibility almost to zero. Conditions are tough, but performance is not impaired. Desert sands present one obstacle but the sea presents another. The corrosive qualities of salt water have discouraged many helicopter designers and operators, but not so with the HOK. Even though the rotors create spray, a freshwater washdown will be all that's needed to maintain the HOK fit for action. Action can mean many tasks. As a utility transport, the aircraft is well adapted to carry personnel. In addition to the pilot, Four men fit easily into the roomy cabin. This is not a clumsy, crowded journey. The doors open wide so that the passengers can quickly be seated. With five husky men in the ship, there's still room for air cargo. The complete flexibility of the HOK is a source of delight, even to veteran pilots. Conversion to an aerial ambulance is quickly and easily accomplished. The nose bubble door on the port side opens wide for complete freedom of movement. With the co-pilot seat removed, it's a simple matter to install two litters, one above the other. Top litter swings out and down. Then the whole assembly is rocked back up into position and locked securely. 
Once that is firmly in place, the lower litter slides in just below. The nose bubble door is closed, sealing the heated cabin so that patients are as comfortable as possible. Extra space behind the pilot provides room for an ambulatory patient or medical attendant who can give added care to the needs of the patients. Time from landing to takeoff, including the loading of the litters, has been clocked at less than a minute and a half. The extreme versatility of the HOK can be shown in many ways. This aerial shot, developed and printed within a half hour after exposure, was shot from the port side of a low-flying HOK. Especially adaptable for reconnaissance work, the cabin is roomy enough to give the photographer ample space for his equipment and choice of position. During a loading operation, both the side door and nose bubble can be used if necessary. The fact is that nearly 80 cubic feet of cabin space can be utilized for stowage. While protected cargo is important in many operations, the HOK is not limited to the amount of cargo that fits inside the cabin, not by a long shot. Quite often, the helicopter is operated as an aerial crane. Payload on this type of lift is nearly a ton. Five full drums of fuel can be carried with all the ease of a forklift. The cargo hook can be attached to the aircraft in a matter of minutes. The hook remains secure during flight. A great percentage of military cargo is carried in this manner. It is, of course, the fastest type of aerial transfer. At the receiving end, the pilot selects any of three methods for releasing the load. The first and quickest is the automatic release. The hook is set to release the load upon contact with the ground. A second selection lets the pilot release the load from within the ship. An alternate setting leaves the decision up to the ground personnel. Probably the most dramatic of all helicopter missions is the rescue, using the electric hoist. Designed to lift a maximum weight of 600 pounds, the hoist can be installed on either side of the HOK. floods, many persons were picked up from rooftops, swollen streams, and other locations where landing was impossible. Once the harness is secured, the hoist takes over, lifting the rescued man to a position where he has easy access to the cabin. Such is the role of the HOK, ever watchful, ever ready. This readiness is due in part to the care of the mechanics who know and understand the variety of missions the aircraft can and does perform. They'll tell you that maintenance on the HOK is not difficult or complicated. This is a ship that flies. The compactness and accessibility of all parts makes a thorough post-flight check possible in just a few minutes. Just as soon as the rotor blades stop turning, he's ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. 
A brief interview with the pilot keeps the mechanic posted on the next mission. He needs to know the fuel requirements and any information about a change in equipment. Inspection of the rotors is done from the top of the cabin. While they are given the once over by the crew chief, an assistant checks the gas and oil. The HOK has been engineered so that servicing the ship is possible in the short time that it takes the pilot to get his clearance for flight. We call these flight missions, but they're really just jobs to be done. Whatever the job, the HOK is the best kind of help possible. You feel that when you get into the cockpit. The controls are all within easy reach. The instruments are placed so that your eye looks toward the right place automatically. Maximum visibility has been provided, so you're ready. Ready to do a job anywhere, anytime, any place. In construction jobs, the helicopter has accepted the impossible as routine flying. The HOK has withstood the wind and salt of the sea. And it has functioned well after being exposed to the toughest kind of dust and desert conditions. Day and night, freezing cold and tropical heat and rain never put a halt to performance. Rugged terrain is an added challenge to the HOK, a challenge that has always been met. Ten years of experience in designing, developing, and manufacturing successful helicopters has given command aircraft the ability to produce a ship that will give peak performance at all times. Mm -hmm.